The Endangered Species Act is one of the most powerful conservation laws in the world. It helped bring back the bald eagle from the brink of extinction. It protected wolves, whales, and even wildflowers. But right now, in 2025, it's being changed, and there are only four days left to speak up whether you're for or against this. These changes could have a massive ripple effect on the life that walks this earth, human and animal alike. So here's the breakdown on what's happening. Signed into law in 1973, the Endangered Species Act, also known as the ESA, was designed to stop species from going extinct. And it works. Since its creation, 99% of the species on the ESA list have avoided extinction, and this is supported by multiple sources that I'll link down below. A little known fact about the ESA also is that it doesn't just protect animals, it protects plants too. So that is a whole lot of life saved. The ESA has many success stories, but perhaps one of the greatest ones has been bald eagles. By the 1960s, eagle populations had crashed. DDT, pesticide poisoning, and habitat loss nearly wiped them out. But the ESA gave them legal protection and a second chance. And today, we have gone from just a few hundred nesting pairs to over 71,000. That is awesome. All right, now to the changes. In April 2025, federal agencies proposed some changes to the ESA. Specifically, it centered around the definition of one word, harm. Right now, under the ESA, it is illegal to harm endangered species, and this definition of harm is very important. For decades, this definition included many things, directly harming the species, but also destroying its habitat, even if you never directly injured the animal. But the proposed rule would change that. It would redefine harm to mean only direct actions, things like physically killing or injuring wildlife. This means that things like habitat destruction and habitat degradation would only count if it directly killed the species. Otherwise, it's fair game. Supporters of the change argue that the current definition of harm is too broad, making landowners and developers potentially liable for unintentionally damaging habitats even if no animals are directly harmed. They believe that narrowing the definition would reduce regulatory overreach, protect property rights, and streamline conservation efforts without repealing the law itself. People against the changes, meanwhile, worry that it could weaken protections for species that depend on fragile or shrinking habitats to survive. Very often, we don't see the scope of ecological damage until months or even decades later after the changes happen. This is a concept known as ecological lag, and it is well documented in environmental science. So there are obviously two very different sides to this story, but perhaps there is one central question to it all. Can we protect wildlife without protecting where they live? If a salamander disappears because its wetland is paved over, is that not harm? If a bird never lays eggs because its nesting tree was cut down even though it didn't kill the bird, is that still not harm? Maybe this moment is a chance to ask ourselves what protection should really look like in a changing, advancing world. It's easy to care about wildlife in theory, but much harder when it involves rethinking about how we use land and how it affects our economy. I think this discussion about the ESA is particularly timely, considering the recent discussion about Colossal bringing back the dire wolf. And by the way, I made two videos on that, so be sure to check those out if you haven't gotten filled in in that matter yet. Because in the end, those two videos asked the same question that we're facing now. What does real conservation look like? And in addition, with this proposed change to the ESA, we are being asked, what matters most to us as humans? And what kind of world do we want to live in? We live in a beautiful, incredible world. But the more we advance as the human race, the more our development threatens the balance that makes this planet so rich with life. The Endangered Species Act was created to protect that balance, to make sure progress didn't come at the cost of extinction. So the biggest question of all is, does this amendment affect that? I think yes, but I'll let you decide for yourself. Leave your thoughts down below in the comments.
As of now, the public has until May 19th, 2025, that's four days from the time this video is uploaded, to submit comments on the proposed change. This means that you can weigh in, whether you're a scientist, a landowner, a student, or someone who just cares about wildlife. I'll link the official comment page in the description below.